On the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Riots, ID visits the Sage Center, an accessible and inclusive space for LGBT plus elders to celebrate their grassroots activism 50 years on. That's freedom. This is fun. <laughs> I've gone from being a prisoner to watch me not give a fuck. I volunteer at this place called SAGE, which is a community center for LGBT plus elders, and I'm going there to find out how rights have evolved for our community over the last 50 years. So we're here at the Edie Windsor SAGE Center. As you get older, you're maybe not as connected to your yeah, family and, of origin, and, it's and you don't necessarily have, have, have kids and so on, so it's an opportunity to get together. Many of the elders who attend SAGE lived in New York during the 1950s and 1960s and have memories of what the city was like before the Stonewall Riots took place. New York was paradise for the gay people, for, for gay, certain gay people. We had all sorts of wonderful places to meet secretly, going downstairs and in, in, in older buildings. Uh, and there was something special in that. I was involved in the uprising in 1969 at Stonewall. And for the record, it was not a riot. What happened was Judy Garland had died and they were having her wake up town. And so everybody had gone into Stonewall, got into all their finery and whatnot and went uptown to go to the wake. And everybody came back to Stonewall, to the Stonewall Cafe. This is the time that the cops decided to pull one of their famous raids. The trans people of color are the ones who started the Stonewall Rebellion. Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera, you wanna know what they faced? Paying your dues with hair, teeth, skin, and bone. That's how people got to this point here today. It didn't come easy. We went up Christopher Street and Sylvia said, we're gonna die tonight. I said, no, we're not. <laughs> we got work to do, you know. So the cop was advancing toward us. And when he went to go for his gun, I was like, we have two trash can covers and ran toward him, clammed him upside his head. And me and Sylvia Rivera got away. Right now, we're about to go into a movement class, which is one of the programs that they offer through the Sage Center. The teacher of the program is an 80-year-old dancer and singer who still dances and sings professionally, so I'm really excited to see this. I'm Donald, you are? Lewis. Donald, nice to meet you. All right, watch. <laughs> Pull out and back. I came from a very small town, which is still small. It hasn't grown. They're in a time warp somewhere. And of course, things I've learned since I've been here that I didn't think ever were possible. It's a place we can be ourselves and not worry. It's certainly safe and uh, lots of things that are interesting to me. The teacher was amazing. I, w I hope to be like a fraction of how alive he is when I'm his age because he went off. <laughs> We are about to go visit my friend Sal Manetti. Sal used to march in pride parades and march on Washington and stuff like that in the 70s. And now he can't walk. I feel very, very indebted to him. Hello, Sal. How are you? Good to see you. <laughs> How are you doing today? At Sage, they send out email blasts. And then I got in contact with Sal and... We hit it off. Yeah, we hit it off. In 2010, I had a stroke. and it completely paralyzed my right side and my legs. I don't go out. So having someone come over is really, really nice. Sal is an amazing painter. He's been painting his whole life. And when he had the stroke and lost the use of his right side of his body, he taught himself how to paint with his left hand. When did you move to the city? 1975. It was all about connecting with people. That's the best way of saying having sex. <laughs> I was one to do interventions at the bars, handing out condoms, talking about safe sex. You would meet people, then a week later they would die. The AIDS crisis would make people connect and start seeing themselves as a community of people. Right. And if you want to do something, do it. Because then you'll look back and be like, why yeah, we, didn't I yeah, do that? Yeah, exactly. Right. That's if you want to be an artist, be an artist. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a dancer, be a dancer. Mm -hmm. Do it. Seeing just like how much life he has and how inspired and driven he is to continue to live the fullest life he can under the circumstances that he's been dealt, it's really, really inspiring. 
older LGBTQ people are the reason we are able to even say, I'm gender fluid, I'm trans, I'm gay, I'm a lesbian, and not be ashamed of it. The LGBT world should be going out and helping others. We have an identity, we have a sense of respect now. We should be there helping people who need help. Younger people have refilled our gas tanks. I owe them everything. There's no word to explain the sense of love in this room right now. As the younger generation, we normally don't have a lot of conversations and physical spaces where we can interact and engage. Who you love, who you live with, should not have anything to do with who you're perceived to be. Don't give up the fight, because the fight ain't hardly over. You fight for your freedom every day. Nobody gives it to you, no politician on the city council. Live your life, live your truth, and live it emphatically 24-7. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Oh, freedom. Go home.